Hey guys, what's up? Stock Retail coming back to you Tuesday night, uh, early evening here on the West Coast, getting deep into the evening if you're on the East Coast, um, and then all other parts of the world, all kinds of time zones. Uh, greetings to you on this sort of Tuesday, or perhaps some of you hearing this on your Wednesday. There is so much going on with AMC. I want to cover a few things. Um, we'll make today a mix of news. There's a whole lot of news that I want to make sure you guys have seen. Some of it maybe is obviously related to us, some of it not as obvious, so I want to touch on that. Um, there's just kind of a lot of swirl around us, and if you're like me at all, um, some days it can feel like there's so much, it's, um, gosh, it's almost making me have kind of attention deficit problems because, you know, I'm trying to work, I've got to feed my family, I've got three kids here and a wife and a dog I've got to feed, um, and so, you know, I'm working hard, but there's so much flying at us all day, news, um, stock action, all that stuff. And so every once in a while, you just get to that place where it becomes, it can become almost overwhelming. And some friends of, of mine and I were talking about that recently. And so just side note before we get into today's video, just to encourage you, if you get to that place, I've been there multiple times. This has been almost a three-year journey for me. There are peaks and valleys. There are moments where your brain just feels like I cannot digest more. And you start forgetting little things going on in your life. Um, those are the moments that it's like, whoa, okay, I need some white space, I need to chill for a minute, uh, do something fun, sit on the couch with your family, play video games, go outside, meditate, whatever it is for you that gives your brain that white space, um, because there's all kinds of distractions that fly at you. Speaking of which, I mean, I'm recording here and my 17-year-old is trying to call me, <laughs> so it's distracting me, but that's what happens all day. Uh, he is obviously a lot more than a distraction and is well worth... Uh, I don't know what the finish to that sentence is. I really am distracted. He keeps calling. So uh, I'll let him turn around and call his mom. Stuff you didn't ask to hear about today. Sorry, guys. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about all this news, but I'm going to try to put some of it in context. We're going to look at history as well. I've got some history. I told you I've been here three years. There's stuff that pops up. People kind of say, hey, have you heard about this? And I'm like, yeah, I wrote a whole article on that in 2021. Um, so maybe I'll point to some of that and tell you guys some of the history and all of that. Um, we'll do a little bit of DD, talk some numbers again. The last video, you guys reacted to that pretty strongly, a lot of positive reaction. Also, um, I saw an abnormal amount of trolling that that one got. Um, and so I'm going to address a couple of, I don't know, I won't even call it critiques. Critique is well thought and grounded in reality. This was just some attacks. And Shorty, you know, I told you on Twitter after it, don't try to outlogic me, friend, because it's not going to work. Um, when I say I have two masters in business, I really do, so I know what I'm talking about here. So we're going to revisit just a couple of numbers. Today, that's going to be tiny, um, not so much on the numbers. So let's just get into this. Um, there's a lot going on. Uh, so I'm just going to even cover some dates I see upcoming and some we just hit. So if you didn't see um, September 11th yesterday... I believe was the six month anniversary, so I'm calling it here the six month anniversary of popcorn in Walmart doors. So you remember Walmart got a six month exclusive window. That's why that matters because Adam has said once that exclusive window is over, there'll come a time we're gonna get announcements that they're in new doors. Um, I don't have to tell you that once you add hundreds or thousands of doors, you start gaining market share, you start selling more bags of popcorn. So we're gonna see that soon. Um, I'm gonna just give you opinion here little bit of hyper pump so you know do what's right for you in my opinion just I would not suddenly just run to the new doors let's balance out continuing to support Walmart for helping grow that business um, but also let's show whoever are the new partners that apes show up and uh, we show up in big ways you know we have the ability to help make that business successful and drive a lot of energy in particular we're even if you don't have the money to buy bags of popcorn you can drive energy on social media platforms and all of that so Anyway, any day now, could see that. Um, yeah, we'll see. So tomorrow, I'm going to talk through more in a minute here because this is big, big news. So if you haven't seen, I'm sure most of you have, that FTX begins liquidating some of their assets. And some of you, I saw some serious, some tongue-in-cheek kind of saying, what assets? I thought they basically were one big Ponzi scheme. I think that's fair to say. But there are holdings that are being liquidated beginning. Um, th that liquidation, I think, actually has a final approval tomorrow. I'll show you kind of a headline on that in, in a minute here. Um, so anyway, that's a big, big deal. We're going to cover what the relationship is to AMC on that in a few minutes here, kind of a couple slides away. 
Dumb Money, preview showings, um, already starting tomorrow. So for some of you, um, that will be in your theater. Show up, support that, support AMC, support uh, a story that's very closely related to us. You know, I just want to address, um, I don't know, something on the side here for a lot of us. You know, in this three-year journey for me, I pretty consistently for a while got attacked by so-called elitists. I think most of you know what I mean when I say that. My point of view has always been, I am for retail. When I first named myself, uh, my account on Twitter, you know, it's stock retail, or a lot of people just call me retail. Um, that was because I saw this as a movement in 2021. I saw the little guy saying to the, not even just the 1%, but the 0.1%, we are tired of you using fraud, manipulation, and corruption to basically take food off of tables and clothes off of backs, and we're not going to take it anymore, and we're not going away. Um, and we see your lies, and we're going to research and share with each other and educate each other and make a new culture in some ways would be my dream, like a culture where we reach out hands and the only time we say no fair is because somebody else doesn't have enough. That's kind of something I envision personally. Um, and so, yes, Dumb Money is about GameStop, not AMC, but boy, we've been a huge part of this story. Everything I just talked about in terms of retail, in terms of the little guy, in terms of putting food on table and clothes on backs, uh, I think that matters. And so I do view this as part of our story. And if you are really just a GameStop ape and not so much AMC, or if you're just AMC and not so much GameStop, you know, I, I look through some of the petty divisions that I think, frankly, are the 0.1% trying to keep us from unity with each other. And then, honestly, a lot of the elitists, I see through them to um, there are ulterior motives and people who are agents, let's say. So I just want to set that aside. I am excited about this movie. I'm excited about what it means to AMC. I'm excited about what it means to a chapter in our story. I do not think it's the end. So, yep, some previews tomorrow. Then um, there are a little more showings starting on Friday. There was some confusion if you saw on the internet. You know, some people were like, hey, how come there's not more showings of dumb money? If you don't know, it's not the full wide release yet. That's why. So this is kind of a soft launch, if you will, um, starting this Friday. And then you can see here the 29th, that comes out wide release. Part of the reason I'm highlighting all these dates, interesting that dumb money comes out on the day FTX liquidation begins. Um, that it goes a little wider this Friday. You probably saw tweets from Adam highlighting those dates and highlighting dumb money today. These are dates that people have been watching for a while. I tell you all the time on this channel, I will never give you dates. I will never give you prices for any kind of squeeze or price movement or anything like that. Uh, but, I, you know, I confess, in private discussions, these are dates people have had their eyes on for uh, let, just news, things happening um, in some cases, quantitative analysis, in other cases, news analysis, and sure enough, there's a lot going on. So I just have my eyes open these days, that's all I'm saying. I'm not talking about, you know, I always say kind of the phrase on this channel, I'm not talking about MOAS on Tuesday. I'm just saying these are dates people have had their eyes on for months, and there's a lot going on around these dates, so at least it's got the hairs on the back of my neck up, let's put it that way. That is not DD, right? That's just some gut and emotion. Um, all right, so it goes wide September 29th at the end of the month. October 13th, we're going to talk on this video today about callable bonds. There's a little bit of chatter out there, has been for a month or so on bonds. I'm going to address that a little bit from my point of view. Uh, I'm going to be fairly neutral, just going to share some information with you. But of course, October 13th, the really big thing, Taylor. Um, boy, we've got, I called it a swift quake. I am so excited for that. I'm beyond excited. I'll talk a little bit about numbers again later. Oh, the callable bonds. Uh, I'm going to explain more, but that is a date you want to know because there are bonds for AMC that are callable. It means they can pay them off early. Um, so that's just kind of interesting. November 5th, uh, I don't know. That's why it says ish. We don't have an announcement yet, but that's roughly the timing. Maybe that week, maybe the next week we'd be getting Q3 earnings. So I'm just imagining for myself, notice that word imagining, that's, that's not DD, that's not fact, but let's say we get a popcorn announcement, we get a debt payment announcement, we get a few movies doing well, like Dumb Money, I'm going to take my mom to see Poirot, there's some others coming out here soon, we get positive Q3 earnings, we get Taylor just blowing the doors open. We could have a series of bullish news for quite a while now. Um, 
you know, that I do not think that's hopium. The things I just told you are relatively, um, I don't know, expected, if that could maybe be the word I could put on those. So we could have a series of bullish news here for the next foreseeable future, really. And that's something I'm watching as well. And what that does in light of, here's some big things in play. Um, if you didn't see, uh, Virtu Financial, you probably heard of Doug. People call him Dougie Large on Twitter. He likes to troll us apes. He likes to attack us. Uh, he's the guy who you may have seen the video once basically saying they can create infinite liquidity. A lot of us heard that as code and not even hidden code for selling as many shares as they want, regardless of how many shares a company has issued. So apes do not have much fondness for Dougie, and that is putting it beyond nicely. Um, let's just say it's my point of view um, that perhaps some justice is owed to this man and to his company and to anyone around him. And it's also my point of view that there are, uh, let's say, wolves in apes clothing who basically work with and for him. Um, I'm not going to name names here, but I've got I've got some people I've got my eyes on. So, if you didn't see, the SEC is going after Dougie. Thankfully, I'm very happy about this. Um, you can see, today we filed charges against broker-dealer Virtu Americas LLC and its parent company, Virtu Financial, for making materially false and misleading statements and omissions regarding information barriers, blah, 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 basically sharing... Uh, information from one side of the house to the other that's not supposed to be shared that would allow some cheating. And, you know, this from the people who talk about infinite liquidity and troll apes online. I am not surprised. Let's see how this court case goes. But if Dougie's not able to continue making infinite liquidity, uh, that could be interesting too. More news. Uh, this is from Bitcoin Magazine. Uh, something else that I've been tracking because there's some folks close to me who've been kind of highlighting this for a while. We're going to talk crypto here in a minute and give you a timeline, and it'll help you understand why some of this is a big deal. Um, also announced today, basically, so Gary says they're reviewing the grayscale ruling. Follow that court case. Just go Google that. Um, and Bitcoin spot ETF filing. So there are companies who are trying to create exchange-traded funds. Think of it kind of like a mutual fund, right? Most of you probably now know what an ETF is. Basically, a Bitcoin ETF. Uh, hold that thought. But just trust me, that's really big news. I guess I always say no trust me, bros, and I just told you to trust me. So let me say that differently. It's my point of view that possible crypto ETFs is really big news. All right. Told you about the FTX liquidation. So you can see here was a headline. Many now worry the massive sell-off could exacerbate challenges facing cryptocurrencies. Impending $3 billion liquidation potentially on the horizon. Big, big deal, and let's start to slowly connect that. Oh, one more thing. The reason I forgot about this is I saw this literally as I was coming to sit down to record. This post was just from 40 minutes before I recorded. So when I say there's a lot going on and there's a lot of news, this just in, this was 40 minutes before I started recording this video. Here's a post. Binance US CEO resigns. Uh, let's talk about all of this going on. So I didn't animate this. Just try to hang with me. I'm going to go left to right. So if you don't know, and, and by the way, I've got a whole video, look up Tigers and Frogs, months and months ago that goes through kind of the timeline of crypto and some stuff with us and how that connects even to influencers who have tried to lead you astray and who some of you, frankly, have fallen for and followed. Um, there's some history on that. Anyway, if you don't know, Bitcoin, basically, the white paper for it, you know, comes out actually right before the, the crash of 0809. That's really interesting timing, right? Bitcoin effectively basically created right before that market crash. Oh, I should have put on here. Also right before the VW squeeze. So the Volkswagen squeeze comes right after effectively the creation of Bitcoin. Find that pretty interesting. Um, January 2021. If you don't know, Binance actually made AMC tokens before FTX did. And do you know the creation date of those tokens? It's January 27th of 2021. You know the date of the buy button removal and a lot of the squeeze goings on, right? AMC tokens created with Binance. And actually, you can see here, CM Equity AG, that's a German group. January 27th, 2021. You know, when I say I wrote a whole article on this, you can go find that on Reddit. Look for something just all about AMC digital assets. It'll go a lot deeper on this. It's, it's a long read, but it'll give you some information. That's a heck of a date for the first AMC tokens to be created. January 27th, 2021. All right, so let's keep going. 
Right before our June run that year, did you know that Binance basically backed out of those tokens? They <laughs> turned tail and ran. And you see FTX kind of come on the scene. Uh, and I, I say quadrillions here in question. At one point, we saw literally like eight quadrillion tokens. Um, no idea, honestly, if those were ever intended to be, you know, one for one with AMC. You understand how big of a number quadrillion is. Uh, so perhaps those were meant to be fractional, but regardless of whatever the heck it was, it was a lot and it was big. And Sam got on a call once and tried to say that they backed AMC one to one. I do not believe any of the Europe tokens with Binance were ever backed one to one. I do not believe any of the FTX tokens were ever backed one to one. And so effectively, think about that infinite liquidity that we just talked about with Dougie Large. Uh, you could really dilute a float dilute a stock if you're creating way, way, way too many securities that are supposedly backed by this equity. And then you trade them all over the place. You could use them for locates, for borrowing shares. By the way, there are influencers who've tried to gaslight us and say that's not the case. But let's keep going and connect some dots and we'll explain, you know, just how um, it's anecdotal evidence, but it's pretty clear that it's connected and I'll show you how. So. We have those tokens created in January. We have, before the June run, Binance getting out. We have FTX getting in, and you know by now they were a complete Ponzi. Um, right after that, you have Cohoed shows up on the scenes, pushing what? Securitized token offerings. He wanted to tokenize AMC. I was very public in fighting him. That's the Reddit you can find. I stood up against him and Terra and Spence and the whole lot of them, uh, and they did not like that. In fact, Cohoed showed up uh, pre-blocking me. He got a list of apes to block. I was one of them. I literally had never even heard of him. In my, he did not exist in the universe in my mind. Uh, was you know, completely, yeah, just non-existent. Never even heard of him, and he came already blocking me. That should also tell you something. Anyway, so he tries to push the tokens. I stand up basically Thanksgiving 21. A whole lot of stuff goes down. That's when Terra basically is removed from the community and seen as. Uh, well, seen for what I believe she is. Anyway, November 2022, so a year later, that's when about when FTX goes down. And that is when, what happened to us? Costabaro ran to like a 1,000%, and we had a little bit of a spike in the stock as well. That's interesting timing, right? Then, this spring, we had the Binance SEC suit. A lot of crypto bros took that as, oh man, Gary Gensler's so corrupt, he won't let us have the freedom in crypto. I hope you're seeing on this timeline how much... Crypto has been connected to some fraud and problems. And, you know, we're not even talking about money laundering and some other issues. So there's the Binance SEC suit. That is the second time AMC spikes in the cost to borrow again. Notice a pattern here. FTX goes down. Hmm. Can't locate. AMC cost to borrow spikes. Binance goes down. AMC cost to borrow spikes. I guess I didn't put on here. In both cases, that's when we start seeing all the FTDs, too. I don't know. Try to look me in the face and tell me it's not connected. You got Cohoes pushing tokenization. You got tokens created January 27th. You got Binance getting out before the June run. You got FTX goes down, cost to borrow spikes. Binance lawsuit, cost to borrow spikes. So, go back to those dates I just showed you. Tomorrow, FTX, if it's approved, begins liquidations. In the meantime, right now, Wall Street's trying to create exchange traded funds for Bitcoin. Keep your eyes open on that stuff, guys. Watch it. There's apes who've done deep DD, you know, I suppose I'd even say I've done deep DD, but there's apes who understand it on a far more um, complex level than I understand it, because it does get incredibly complex, the mechanics of how this stuff works. Um, and so there are apes, I've, I've pointed to some of them on Twitter, perhaps I'll do it again soon. We've got our eyes open, we are watching this. There's a reason my Twitter uh, avatar, whatever you call it, profile pic says we know. This is what I'm talking about, we know this stuff. All right, but what about inflation? All right, we're going to completely switch topics. So my last video, I told you, um, basically, if you if you didn't see that, go check it out. I believe it will give you a lot of conviction. It's straight up facts. It's not pumping a stock, as some people like to pretend we're doing here. Um, we being various apes all over the place. You know, if you've seen my channel, I'm about bringing you data and information. And then, yeah, I've got a thesis. And when I share that thesis, you can take that piece as opinion but it's based on the data. So one of the pushbacks of the last video, I showed you a, a walk from 2018 until now, 
and how on half the movies, AMC is delivering actually more revenue than back then. Um, and what a big deal that is. And I had a line in there that showed you total expenses as a percent of total revenue. And I think if I just tell you pretty simply, you know, you don't have to be a business person. I told you I've got a couple degrees, but you don't need business degrees to understand the following statement. If the money coming in grows faster than the money going out, you're doing well. You're going to be fine. Let's say that again. If you bring in more money than what you got going out and the money coming in grows faster than the money going out, you're going to have a healthy business and you're not going bankrupt and somebody shorting you is going to have problems. So what I had shown you in the last video was from 2018 until now, expenses as a percent of revenue went down. That means the money coming in grew faster than the money going out over the last five years. And that's on half the movies. And I was inviting you to think about what happens when we get to like 60% of the movies and 70 and 80. And so here's one of the things shorts will try to tell you too that I'm going to head off right now. I'm going to give you the anti-FUD. So they'll say, okay, yeah, but as more movies happen, operating expenses will go up. Um, and that's true. Operating expenses is a variable expense. So it takes people to scan our tickets. It takes electricity to, you know, run the projector, have the lights on, have heating and cooling. Uh, it takes water and sewer for us to wash our hands and do some other things. Uh, right? So operating expenses, the more movies they show, the more of us that come in the door, that's a number. It's called a variable cost. It can go up. Uh, and I'm going to show you that here. Um, and so we want to know, okay, but how are operating ex expenses compared to revenue now versus what, say, they used to be? And what I was showing you is why our market cap should not be as far down as it is. And if it shouldn't be as far down as it is, then I get permission to be pretty darn bullish about this stock. Uh, that's what we were doing there. So we're going to go through that. Um, the other thing that I want you to know is, so I just talked about variable costs. There's something else called fixed cost. So let's say those more movies again. Um, let's just make up a number and say AMC has like 9,400 screens. That's actually about right. I don't quite remember the right number. It's in the mid 9,000s. You can look at their Q2 earnings report and you can actually find the average number of screens they had per day during the quarter. It's, it's something like 9,400. Okay, so those 9,400 screens are in, you know, however many properties and you pay rent on those properties, right? But if you show a, a million movies or if you show one movie, that rent is basically the same. I say basically because sometimes they've been able to sort of flexibly negotiate rent, but let's actually call it the same. The rent they're going to pay on all those properties is fixed. That's why this is called fixed overhead or a fixed cost. If you have all these properties, you got to pay for them. So if you have a fixed cost model, what you really, really want is more product moving, which is why I was also helping you see in the last video that AMC is achieving all of the revenue on half of the product. So what happens when they get more movies? They don't necessarily need more properties. They've already got the properties, which means rent doesn't go up even though they get to show more movies. So if some of their costs are fixed and stay the same, sure, operating expenses will go up. But if their fixed costs stay the same as they were, okay, now they're starting to make more money. Again, remember if the money coming in grows faster than the money going out. They're making more, they're bringing in more, but some of their, their going out numbers are not going up. All right, so let's look at these. Their top three expenses in Q318 were 74% of all their costs. So that's, you can see here at the bottom right, film costs. So they got to pay back the studios, a part of our ticket cost, uh, ticket um, revenue. The operating expense, I've been, talked a lot about that already just now, and then rent. So those were their three biggest costs then, and they're still their three biggest costs. So you can see back then it was 74% of all of their expenses were in those three buckets. So you can imagine we should watch those three buckets. That's three quarters of all of their expenses. In Q2 just finished, their actual results, you don't have to trust me, you can see this in their filing, it was a little bit bigger as a percent of all of their costs, uh, 76%. So if these are their three biggest costs, Let's take a look at how these have gone over the past three years. So second bullet here. Like I said, with half the movies, AMC's three biggest expense items are all actually down as a percent of revenue since 2018. So let's come back to that concept. I'm going to keep hammering it home so we all get it because some of, some of my listeners I know are not like, you know, just business people. So I just want to make this in plain English. If you grow what's coming in faster than what's going out, your business is improving. So what I've done is kind of 
tied Q3 of 2018 basically to zero. And anytime we're doing worse, you're gonna see this number up. And anytime we're doing better than then, you're gonna see this number down. So look at film costs as a percent of revenue. That's our blue line. And I'm just gonna compare the end, because you know, look, we've got 2021 in here. You guys know we were kind of coming out of lockdowns, numbers were wonky, and you can see that, how they're spiking all over the place. So I'm gonna kind of ignore that and try to, let's just look at the end versus the beginning. So if at the beginning we started at zero, anything positive on this is actually bad, anything negative is good. Did we bring expenses down versus revenue? Look at all three of these items, less than zero. That means we're bringing in more revenue per dollar going out than we used to. And that's on half the movies. And like I said, we put more movies out, this rent number, this big gray one, that's not gonna go up. In fact, it's gonna start going down even more. So they're controlling their operating expense. Look at that. Shorty wants to tell you, but what about operating expense? Uh-uh, as a percent of revenue, AMC is more efficient now than in 2018. For every dollar they bring in, there's less dollars going out than in 2018 on operating expense. How about film costs? Same thing. For every dollar they're bringing in, and by the way, you could say, because this is relative to overall revenue, um, because there's less movies and all of that, that could be why it's showing down here. But I could also show you that um, film costs as a percent of just ticket sales is actually down as well. The studios have kind of renegotiated and allowed AMC to keep a little bit more of a cut uh, than they used to. Not a lot, but it's, it's a little bit more. And then last, um, so I guess we just showed them all. Rent, operating expense, all of them. The point is Shorty cannot gaslight you and tell you, well, if you get more movies, your expenses are going up too. Your fixed costs are not going to go up. Uh, by the way, the other thing, I pulled also food and beverage uh, as a percent of revenues, and basically the food and beverage margins uh, have not gone down. In other words, the inflation on the revenue side and the inflation on the expense side are offsetting, and uh, that just means you're not making less money than you used to. In fact, we're making a lot more money on food and beverage than we used to, so that's incredible. Uh, and then these are not all relative because the other thing you need to know is Q3 of 18 was actually negative earnings. Q2 that we just finished was positive earnings, right? And I believe Q3 is going to be positive earnings. So uh, sorry if that was a little complicated. Just pull up and make it super simple. What I'm saying is on three quarters of all of their expenses, those three items are all actually improved in terms of efficiency over the last five years and yet our market cap is half of what it was then. And what happens when movies come back? Boy, you're gonna just see revenues spiking, and that's without popcorn growing, candy growing, Highcroft pulling gold out of the earth, that kind of stuff. So that's the answer to that. I wanna talk about callable bonds, um, because, whoops, I don't know why that went back. We are seeing a lot of discussion on bonds. I mentioned I'm gonna be neutral, so let me just say right off the top, if you are a savvy investor, you can absolutely make money in bonds and they can be a less volatile uh, investment in some cases than stocks. I say in some, we're, we're in some pretty unique times here and bonds can move all over the place when interest rates are moving. And what have you been hearing the last few years? Interest rates, right? Um, but in general, a savvy investor can make good money on bonds. It can be something called a fixed income investment. You know, you're getting paid interest payments from a company or in some cases from a government. Uh, you hear about something called municipal bonds. That's kind of like, say, city, state, federal, whatever. Uh, you, you have corporate bonds. That's AMC that we're talking about. So some of you are starting to become interested in the bonds because you're hearing them talked about a lot. So I just want to give you some considerations to make sure that you understand. And then, as always, do your own DD. I'll also say right off the bat, I am not an expert in bonds. There are plenty of apes who know more than I do about bonds, but I'm going to give you just a little run by um, first of all, you need to understand that a lot of AMC's bonds are something called callable. Callable basically just means when they decide, they can pay them off. To call a bond is to pay it off early. And that paying off early matters. So here's something from Investopedia, for example, um, kind of talking about the fact you could end up losing money on callable bonds. So we're going to talk a little bit about why. Um, but you need to understand when you buy bonds, it you tend to basically do the math on um, how long is this bond open for? So how many interest payments am I going to get? And then I'm going to get my cash back. And then there's something called the, the net present value or the time value of money. So if I'm not getting my cash, my principal, 
back for, I don't know, say six years. We know that inflation is a real thing. And so my cash, you know, if I put in $1,000 today and I get $1,000 six years from now, well, it, it, that $1,000 doesn't buy me the same amount. So you get all this math on um, premiums versus discounts, uh, what a bond is going to cost you. But the thing you need to know is there's a lot of callable bonds in AMC, which means they could pay them off early. What have apes been talking about? AMC is going to be paying off debt. What have I told you on this channel? Eight out of the last 10 quarters, AMC has paid off debt at steep discounts. Uh, they haven't actually had to pay the full face value back. That's been with banks. That's probably not with individual holders, uh, but that gets into a whole other thing. So you can lose money on callable bonds. That's the first thing you need to know. I don't mean to scare you because you can make money on them too. So let me just say that clearly, but this is straight from Investopedia. You got to watch that. Um, and so then there's more information that has to do with kind of the interest payments you're expecting and the math on when you buy that bond. And um, there's a lot of discussion you'll see if you were to do DD on this around if interest rates go down. That's not really our environment right now, right? So there's probably some question on, is the Fed going to start pausing interest rate hikes? Will interest rates ever be reduced? I'm not so sure we're there right now. Like we're either flat or up probably on interest rates, but I'm not an expert on that either. So you, you may be able to kind of ignore the DD on interest rates going down, but you just need to know the math on buying these bonds can end up kind of blowing up in your face if they get called because part of the price of buying it is like the value of all these future interest payments. And so say you buy a bond due five years from now and AMC pays it off in six months, the math of when you bought it, you're expecting these five years of interest payments. Well, you're not going to get them. You got just six months worth. And so all of that future money is gone, but you might have paid a purchase price that factored that in. And that's how you can lose money. So I'm not going to read this here, but same kind of uh, idea also from Investopedia. It's a whole section on how you can lose money. Um, and it has to do, so just let's focus on the right. I'll pull us up to these three kind of simple concepts. If you're going to start considering buying into these, among other things, you need to understand premiums versus something called the face amount versus the purchase price. You're going to need to know those. If you can't answer those things, you probably shouldn't be buying bonds. Um, two, you need to understand the rates, interest rates I'm talking about, and the rates on the bonds. So the Fed's interest rate, the bond interest rate, all of that, even bank rates. Um, and then you need to understand what happens if they're called. Uh, and why does that matter? So if I went back, let me, sorry for all the clicking, but we're going to just go there. Do, 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 do. Remember I said October 13th. There's a bunch of bonds that have an October 13th date that's callable. There's probably others that it's already passed. Like, I'm sure that there's bonds uh, that AMC can call that are all over the place. So if you ever buy bonds, you want to know, are they callable? What's it going to mean if this company, or in some cases municipality, calls my bonds? And you want to just factor in that risk when you're buying them, okay? So I'm just inviting you, do a lot of research. Um, the other thing you need to know, bonds are not the stock, right? So Bonds are debt from a company that can be paid off. We've talked about that. Stocks are equity. So you hear people talk about equities, right? Equity just means ownership. You ever talk about how much equity you might have in your house or something like that. So you own a piece of this company. That's your equity. Um, but you only own that in stocks, not in bonds. In bonds, you own debt. A company owes you money. Now, there's, there's pros to that. Uh, for instance, a company like... Uh, I don't want to stick salt in a wound. Uh, Let's say a company like Sears that went bankrupt. If you owned bonds, you're at the front of the line through that bankruptcy, uh, those proceedings, to try to get some of your money back. Stockholders basically get nothing in a bankruptcy. Uh, let me say super clearly, and I've said for these three years, I do not believe AMC is going bankrupt. I believe it's becoming a healthy business. I'm very bullish on the stock. But I just want to be fair and be neutral here and acknowledge uh, there are pros to bonds. You're more in front of the line if a company becomes distressed. You have more of a shot at getting your money back or at least some of your money back. Um, but you don't actually own the company itself. Now there's a thing called convertible bonds, but I'm not going to get into that right now either. So the other thing you got to consider then is it's, you know, when we're talking about a possible short squeeze, there are ways that bonds can squeeze, but that starts to get above my head and I don't want to do that DD right now. But generally we're talking about the AMC stock squeeze. So if AMC stock squeezes and you put your money over in bonds, you're going to have to decide how you would feel about that or how you feel about perhaps getting paid interest rates. That's the pro. 
Okay, so these are things you just need to understand. They're callable, that can really impact profit and loss, and they're not the stock. So final bond thoughts, uh, you can make money on bonds. You can also lose money on bonds, so you gotta do your research. Uh, and like I said, do you understand things like coupon rates and callable bonds and premiums and future interest rate movements? And then you got to think through, do you believe that AMC stock might squeeze? For me, I like the stock. That's where I'm at. I'm not investing in the bonds. But you don't hear me knocking them or kind of poo-pooing it either. Um, I'm just saying it's not for me. And you need to do your research if you decide it's for you. Okay? All right. Latest numbers. Uh, we're almost there. We're rounding into home here. Q3, I still think that we're hitting profits. Uh, you know, it's close, but Q2 was close too, and we had $8 million of profits. So I do believe Q3 is profitable. I'd love to know more about what's the size of the popcorn business. I still don't. It's, you know, my guess is as good as yours, or your guess is as good or better than mine, however you want to say that. Uh, but I do believe we're making profits in Q3. So looking forward to that earnings call that would be in November. Let's finish the quarter strong. You know, go to movies, buy buy gift cards, uh, buy popcorn, use the credit card, invite your mom to a movie like I did, that kind of stuff. Uh, and as far as numbers, uh, boy, Taylor just, I think that I'm too conservative. I, you know, I had a whole video on the forecast, so at least you understand the levers, and I gave you some high scenarios too, you know, if she really beats what I was thinking. Um, man, <laughs> Swifties, I love you guys. I think this is gonna be really, really big, so you know, we're gonna see. We'll keep track of that. Shoot, thought I had one more thing, guys. That is kind of the end. Um, just like I said, play it safe on bonds. Do your DD. Um, oh, I know I had one other just last thought, too. If you haven't seen, Gary even said the SEC is using AI to try to catch, um, I don't know, corrupt and fraudulent trading. You know that we talk about algorithms all the time, driving the stock market. That's AI. Uh, we talk about sentiment, you know, stock sentiment, positive, negative, all that stuff, that there are um, algos that drive on sentiment. So I, I guess I just want to make sure we continue to make ourselves aware that the ways that you talk on social media in particular um, and the negativity or the positivity you use, actually the AI is listening to that. So I just want to invite everyone to just think through how you're out there talking. For me, I've chosen... Um, you know, positivity, but that's just partly also who I am. Uh, but I'm, you know, for me, there's also a line that I don't cross in, in terms of turning into pumping. You know, I, I keep it real on this channel. I give you facts, I give you data, and I'm honest when I'm maybe disappointed or frustrated about something too. But generally, I just want you to think through if AI is listening and that is potentially impacting the price of stocks that you own, getting in all kinds of drama and fights and negativity and anger and rage and stuff online might not be the way. I hope you understand kind of what I'm saying. Meantime, AMC's looking at positive earnings. Taylor's crushing it. FTX is starting to pay the price. Perhaps Dougie Large is going to pay the price. Binance is on the line. I like where we're sitting. Let's go.